I can't believe they used to do this to people. Like this is gonna help anyone. They're a fucking sick race of people humans are. Please stop the damn ringing, my goodness. What do we got? September 7th, 1938. The patient frequently indulges in recriminations expressed in an explosive tone of voice. This morning she threw away the milk, saying it was full of urine, spittle, and all kinds of other filth. Crazed, she hears voices that order her to do things. She says she heard children singing and that they were locked up in a school. January 20th, 1939. Introverted, dazed, cannot focus on anything. When questioned and stimulated, she starts crying and weeping. At other times, she laughs. June 1st. Apathetic. Eats very little. She refuses to be touched. Does not respond. Spends her time in the grounds. The cooks report that she sits on a bench in front of the kitchens, October 14th. Return of impulsive behavior. This morning she asked for two eggs to make tzabayoni, but when she got them, she threw them up in the air. Excited, clamorous, slightly confused, takes her clothes off. December 8th, tied to bed for 15 days. High-spirited, tends to make witty comments and use vulgar words laughs hysterically and pleasures herself. The nurses report that about two weeks ago she remained in the showers on her own and didn't want to leave. They said that when they took her away she swore at them and then lashed out and bit them. Two nurses had to be treated for their injuries. They've kept her tied to the bed since then. Transferred to the slightly agitated ward from the care of Dr. B to the care of Dr. C. I was with Amara in the showers. My memories are terrifying. They're not real, are they? I was with Amara in the showers. My memories are terrifying. They're not real. December 15th. Dr. C. Patient notes. The abnormality of her psychic state has induced her to lead a life which is irregular and tends towards delinquency. Of fickle and flighty character, she regularly discards her household duties and engages in occasional prostitution. Prostitution? Me? No, I don't think I could have... Or are my memories deceiving me? What other horrible things could I have done without even realizing? The uncertainty, the fear of my own actions was one of the things that tormented me most. Her mental deficiency makes her deaf to the reprimands of her family. She has shown suicidal tendencies. She was brought to the ward yesterday, agitated and vociferous. Treated with cardiazole, two injections a week for five weeks. The therapies removed the light for a while, but also all her will, desire, and hope. Well, the important thing was to keep us quiet, just so this is not sure. I like any of these choices. The important thing was to keep us quiet. No. To a certain extent, they were trying to make you feel better. They were lost souls. I mean, maybe. The therapist removed the light for a while, but they were desirous. The therapy was terrible and painful, but they were the treatments, the only ones that knew existed. Oh, but it was okay at the time, because that's all we knew. 
Uh, it was torture, but we had no choice. Nobody explained anything. No one tried to help us understand. We were like farm animals. They were like farm. There were too many, and they were too few. It was impossible to decide. They also had their nightmares with these ones. They didn't know what to do with you. They were themselves dangerous. We ought to obtain who ought to obtain you. I said nightmares when these ones they didn't know what to do with you. There were too many. There were too many, and there were too few. It was possible. To I guess. June second. After a long period of calm and improvement, the patient is very agitated today and vehemently refuses to submit to a gynecological examination. She swore and cursed those who generated her, flailing her arms and heading out. According to reports by Dr. B, the patient has been subjected to periodic checkups since she had a spontaneous abortion about two years ago, in her third month of pregnancy. Conception occurred after she had sexual intercourse with a stranger who sneaked into the hospital grounds. Details of the charges filed at police headquarters in Volterra, a copy of which is attached to these clinical notes. ES therapy. A spontaneous abortion. It's not true. I can't believe it. How could I have invented things if I didn't even know what they were doing to me? The lie I was written here might be false. Oh, really. That really happened. They made your book, but it was legal, so they had to write that it was spontaneous. And the stranger in the grounds? I don't remember. Was that another lie? Or was another memory removed? God, my head. June 13th. The nurses report that she descended into a state of great mental confusion after receiving her mother's letter. She threw her soup over another inmate because she was very anxious and then punched a nurse. Impulsive flails about her. She rails against the doctor in vulgar terms while he is examining her, lashes out and spits. Block all correspondence to give the patient no further reason to become agitated. August 20th, tied to bed. The nurses report that the patient is extremely agitated after the visit of a relative or family friend. Two days later, she is still shouting all the time that he commands her, that she must obey and harm herself, and that she is not Charlotte. All visits forbidden, constrained to bed, and intensification of ES therapy until we achieve results. Yes, calm let's down. Just shock someone. You more. must be Don't calm. Work. Don't get agitated. We'll make you calm down. Is that the only thing that matters? Is tranquility worth the price of not living? Calm, calm down, you must be calm, don't get agitated, we'll make you calm down. Is that the only thing that matters is tranquility worth the price of not living? Hundreds of us, agitated, squeezed into the most inadequate of spaces, staying calm was essential for our well-being. What alternative was there? In any case, it was a life not worth living. Certainly not, but in that manner, from the exterior, everything seemed more acceptable. Uh, March 3rd. Alert. Correct attitude. Replies when questioned. The nurses report that the patient is calm. She washes and looks after herself. She affirms the existence of a certain Amara. She says that Amara is a patient who disappeared when she was moved to this ward. No confirmation. Probably a regressive hallucination. Evaluate transfer. Did I imagine Amara? That's not possible. She was there. I know she was there. I feel it. She must have left some traces of her presence. What is real anymore? 
I don't know what's real anymore. God. Okay, so. We can try to find her medical records in the archive where the letters from her mother were filed. Okay. Back to the archive, I guess. It's a long way away when we have to walk everywhere and we cannot run. In here? Somewhere? Aye. Amara B. Aged 32. Housewife. Mother of two daughters. Married to Mario B. So Amara does exist. Yet she had no children and wasn't married. But that photo, it's her. June 3rd, 1936. Admitted yesterday, showing signs of improvement. June 8th. Cheerful, calm, and tranquil. Her behavior is good and she's keeping herself clean and tidy. Discharged on June 10th. April 28th, 1937. Arrived accompanied by her husband in an anxious and nervous state. Has difficulty speaking, trembles. Discharged May 14th. March 8th, 1938. A few days before Renee was admitted, she told me that she too had been admitted only a short time previously. Arrived yesterday in a febrile state. Discharged March 14th. She didn't leave. Certainly not after a few days. No. June 22nd, 1939. Readmitted once more. The patient shows rapid improvement. Discharged July 2nd. August 1st, 1941. The latest of many admissions due to agitation. Discharged August 27th. She came and went. Stayed only for short periods. But I remember she was always with me. Oh, what's going on? March 4th, 1942. Back again, the same situation. March 8th. Compared to previous admissions, the patient seems depressed even after a few days. Although her demeanor is calm and she is attentive. Discharged March 25th. April 2nd. The patient is distracted and apathetic. Her husband brought her here and said, She's not eating, doctor. She spends all her time sleeping. I'm so worried, doctor. You know her. You can help her. April 6th. Tuberculosis. Patient transferred to the Maragliano Pavilion and is in isolation. May 3rd, 1942. Death from tuberculosis at approximately 8.30 a.m. Is Amara dead? Poor dear friend. I wasn't even able to say goodbye to you. Enclosed is a manuscript written by the patient, probably in a state of delirium. I am dying. I know it. I am losing a lot of blood, bleeding internally, too. It's strange. Since I came back in here, I can't stop thinking about that little girl with her sad eyes, her desperation. I only saw her for a short time, it's true, but she remains in my heart. Will she still be here? I hope to God not. I hope she's better and her mother's taken her home. My memories don't match up. What's the point of this? Perhaps my memory is playing tricks on me. Things are not as I remember them, as I see them. But she said she liked me. I just can't understand it. I just wanted to say goodbye to her for the last time. I never even said goodbye to her. How could a soul survive in this hell? I so want to feel things again. Pain, passion. Feel the damn tears rolling down my face. To remember that I was alive. Somehow we got to the graveyard. At least, um, I'm not sure. Graveyard's probably better than this. Uh, um, the asylum. Probably. So, do I look for her? Is that what I'm doing? Why is this car even in here? Or am I going in here?
I can't be sure it's Amara's. These crosses are nameless. How will we ever know who is buried here? There are no names here. Amara no longer exists. Maybe she never really existed. And I was already dead. Why go on living? Let's put an end to it. I want to leave a letter. I want to apologize for the suffering I have caused. Well, you'd think surely there'd be like a a record keeping book or like something to say who's buried where. Then again, maybe not. Maybe not if this um asylum people buried them out here. Oh, huh, what's this? Nothing. The reception is in the entrance hall. There I'll find a pen and paper to write with. Okay. I guess that's what we'll do. So we're leaving now? We're going up this way? I always wanted to stop doing the things I used to do, but I just did it again and again. I kept on making mistakes, destroying my life and that of the people close to me. My soul was rotting in a state of sin. My life has been one long mistake. I'm so ashamed of what I've done. I lost control and couldn't stop myself. A victim of rage and lust. This isn't exactly the best game to play on a Sunday, uh, sunny afternoon. The most obscene desires. Mom, don't come and fetch me. I beg you. You can't just want to turn it off, don't you? I deserve to be in this place. It's my only chance. Like you want to, you you want to see the game through to the end, but at the same time, I'm like, I just want to turn it off. I'm sorry, this is just. But I'm not brave enough to keep on living. It's uh, not like this. Depressing. start of the building. Well, at least we know where we are now. But I'll never change, Mom. Never. Let me die. Don't suffer for me. Forget me quickly. But maybe. Maybe you've forgotten about me already. Not even these birds can cheer me up. Here? I can't. What the f 
fuck is going on? What? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Town of Light. You can catch the next episode soon on this channel. If you like this video and hit subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.